Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and I'll be taking a look at this Drobo 5N network attached storage device. This is great for both home and office use and it's Mac and Windows compatible. Here's what you get in the box. This is a detailed guide on how to connect the Drobo 5N to your network. There's also a safety and warranty guide, a Drobo sticker, and LED indicator sticker guides in other languages. Also included is this 1.8 meter ethernet cable, power adapter, and cord. I like that there's a handy carry bag for the Drobo. I'm sure it can be multi-purpose. Drobo sent me two Seagate 1TB 3.5 inch slim drives for the purpose of testing this NAS out. Standard 3.5 inch drives are compatible too. You can choose to purchase the Drobo 5N as a base unit or with included drives. The Drobo measures 150 millimeters wide by 185 millimeters tall by 262 millimeters deep, and it weighs 3.9 kilograms without any hard drives installed. This NAS comes encased in steel with a glossy front panel and Drobo logo near the top. Beneath the gloss panel is some ventilation, and below that, the LED power, drive capacity, and activity indicators. This panel is removable. Lift away from the bottom, and you'll realize that this door is magnetic. And there are vent holes all around this cover so the drives can breathe. The activity indicator map is on the other side of this cover. You can install up to 5 SATA 2 or SATA 3 hard drives or SSDs. Or mix and match 3.5 inch drives with SSDs, but you'll need at least two of each to get the Drobo running. And what's cool is that you can mix the type and capacity of the drives, like one Seagate 3.5 inch 500 gig drive and one WD 3.5 inch 1 terabyte drive. The max system capacity is 64 terabytes. These are the individual status indicators for the drives. Take note that if there's a red flashing light, it indicates drive failure. Here's a look inside a bay so you have an idea of where the SATA port is located. Let's insert the hard drives into the Drobo. Push down on the gray tab so the drive can easily slide into the bay. You'll hear a click once the drives are in place. Something to be aware of is that during the first install of each drive, all data on that drive will be erased. After the initial format, it'll be safe to remove and reinsert the drive. Now let's move to the rear of the Drobo. You get plenty of ventilation holes, and the 120 millimeter fan is variable speed, so it cools depending on the temperature inside the NAS. In the bottom left corner is a gigabit ethernet port. There's a Kensington lock slot to the right of that, a large power button on this end, and a power port below that. Here's something cool. There's a battery inside this unit. In case you have a power failure, it should allow enough time for transfers to complete before powering down. Next to the power port is the factory reset button. Finally, on the bottom are four rubber feet. You can remove them by just unscrewing them. And this is the Drobo Accelerator Bay. Push on this tab to remove the cover. Here's an mSATA SSD port. This is a great little option for those who need more performance. Be sure to shut down the Drobo before adding or removing an mSATA SSD. Let's get this Drobo 5N set up. First, go to drobo.com start and click the Drobo model you wish to download the software for. Get the documentation here and download the Drobo dashboard. I'll be downloading the 2.7.1 software for Windows. Install the latest version of Drobo dashboard and don't forget to register the product. Connect the Drobo to your router or switch using an ethernet cable. I'm using my own because I need a bit more cable. You can also choose to connect this device directly to your computer if it has an available ethernet port so you can get faster file transfer speeds. Once that's done, attach the power adapter to the Drobo and power on the unit. Now let's move on to the Drobo dashboard. I'm on the home screen right now and everything looks like it's running smoothly. If you have multiple Drobos, you can sort them in this area by health, name, and product. If you prefer list view to icons, you can change it in this area. In Drobo Discovery, it's recommended to enable auto discovery, but there's also the option for adding Drobos by IP. Click on the Drobo on the home screen so you can check on its status. The best status is obviously green for healthy, and I like that the firmware version is present here. There's a drop down menu where you can see the status of the individual drives too. Here's a look at capacity. Because of redundancy, the actual space available is about half right now. The Drobo automatically switches between RAID levels as drives are added or removed, so you always stay protected without having to manually set the RAID. Under usage, you'll see how the space is allocated. In shares, you can set up categories on your network for content sharing. For example, you can create ones called videos, music, and pictures. The public share is there by default, provided are AFP and SMB file sharing protocols. Share settings allows you to manage the settings per share or user. You can add, edit, or delete a share, as well as change user access to a share. When adding a share, there's the option to enable time machine support and limit backup size. If you wish to add, edit, or delete a user, click on the Users tab. You can change the shares access on the right. I love how user-friendly this is. Here's a look at Drobo apps. You'll see all the apps available for the Drobo 5N. To install an app, just click on it and click the Install icon. If you have any apps already installed, you can click on the app to stop, configure, or uninstall it. 
In Tools, there's the option to send an action to Drobo, like telling it to shut down. The blink lights will make the Drobo blink, so you'll know the physical location of the Drobo and which one it is. This could come in handy if you have a lot of Drobos. You can reset and repair it too, as well as check for updates. Always gotta keep a system up to date. Inside Drobo settings, there's General, Network, Admin, and Alerts. Let's go into General. This is where you can choose dual disk redundancy, where the Drobo uses more disk space for more data protection. You'll need more than two disks in order to activate this feature. I like that you can dim the lights on the Drobo in this section. Click to 1 for the dimmest setting and 10 for max brightness. I can see this feature being useful, especially for those who sleep in the same room as their NAS. In Drobo settings admin, you can play with the username and password, as well as enable Drobo apps. Here's a look at dashboard preferences. You can choose to automatically check for updates, toggle on screen and email alerts, and more. Finally is help and support. This is where you can register your Drobos, view the user guide, and even run a diagnostic for a specific Drobo. That wraps it up for this look at the Drobo 5N network attached storage device. If you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media. Join Tech Lover Facebook, join Tech Lover again on Twitter, and join Tech Lover once more on Instagram. If you wish to know where to purchase, be sure to check the link in the description below this video. Also, be sure to follow me on my other YouTube channels, JTL Lifestyle, JTL Cuteness Overload, and JTL Love Life and Advice. I'll see you guys later!